Hey everybody, how's it going? This is group 7 of VBA 360 and this is a presentation on the Keering theory. What is it? Good question. It's a mathematical method of analyzing delays while waiting in a line or a queue. It's used to develop more efficient wait systems to decrease the time a customer has to be serviced which leads to an increase in the flow of products. What are some real life examples? Well, applications of the queuing theory include providing faster customer service, improving traffic flow, shipping orders efficiently from a warehouse, and things like the call centers. Nobody likes being on hold. Businesses are constantly competing to have the better queue times or waiting lines because the shorter the wait, the happier the customer is. And we all know that when the customer is happier, they're going to come back to your business. All right, so we have four main types of queuing systems. The first one is single line, single server, um, kind of like a drive through in McDonald's. You also have single line, multiple servers, such as at a bank. You have one line of all the people at the bank and multiple tellers, and they call the next person in line over to them. Multiple lines and a single server which would be like an apartment maintenance worker. It's one man doing the work, but he has several people waiting for him to do what they need. And then you have multiple lines and multiple servers, which is like at a movie theater. You have multiple lines and you have multiple people helping those lines. Single line versus multiple lines. A single line minimizes the staff that is required while maximizing profit. And it's also the system of first come first serve, which feels more fair when you're the customer sometimes. And on average, it's shorter wait times. Whereas with multiple lines, it creates a little bit of flexibility. It discourages people from leaving because the lines are shorter looking because there's multiple of them. And when somebody sees a really long line, they're so much more likely to walk away than if they see a bunch of short ones. So the goal of the queuing analysts is to minimize the sum of the two main costs that come from queuing up. The first one is customer waiting costs, which is loss of business, which is when the, cu when the customer just doesn't want to wait. Like they want to be in and then they want to get out. And the longer the line, the less likely they are to stick around. There's also loss of goodwill, which is a decrease in customer satisfaction they wait a while, they're not happy, they're not coming back to you. The other cost is service capacity costs, which is direct cost of idle equipment and people. So the people you have working and the equipment, if they're not constantly doing something, you're wasting time and money. Cost of idle service facilities is the payment to be made to the servers for the periods of which they remain idle. So you're paying for those servers to use them to help customers, but if you're not helping customers, you're wasting money, obviously. And as service capacity increases, there's a decrease in the number of customers in the line and their wait times, which reduces the queuing cost. Remember, happy customers will come back. Unhappy customers won't. Even so, sometimes it costs more to, in to decrease the queue times to have more people there doing customer service. In the end, it'll benefit because you'll keep your customers happy. So the relationship between service capacity and queuing costs can be expressed graphically like the figure below. Initially, the cost of waiting in line is at a maximum when the organization is at minimal service capacity. As service capacity increases, there's a reduction in the number of customers in line and in their wait times, which decreases queuing costs. The optimal total cost is found at the intersection between the service capacity and waiting line curves. Also, something to keep in mind is that customer service depends on three main things. How a customer arrives, how customers are serviced, and the condition of customer exiting. So it might not be your business's responsibility of how the customers show up. If they're in a bad mood, that's not your fault. But how they leave is influenced by how they're treated by your employees. So making sure that you have a system in place is very important. The last thing I wanted to talk about before we end this presentation is DMAKE, which is an acronym for Define, Measure, Analyze, Improve, and Control. 
This refers to a data-driven improvement cycle used for improving and optimizing and also stabilizing business processes or designs. This is a tool used to drive Six Sigma projects. So in this case, how you would use it is first you would define or identify the problem that you're having with your wait times or your queuing. Then you would establish the basis for improvement. How are you going to improve it? What needs to be improved? What doesn't? Then you're going to analyze. You're going to list and prioritize the causes and understand them better. After you've done that, you're going to create a solution and put it into motion. And the last step, which is really important, is keeping control. You update it, you pay attention, you try to make it so the problem you had doesn't come back. Because the last thing you want is to be spending time and money fixing the same problem again and again. And that does it for the queuing theory. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you all for an awesome semester and hopefully we'll see each other again. Until then, have a good one.